need to double was... check. Oh. <laughs> we need to double check with Teresa about whether we can record a legal training. Um, but yeah, we I, I mean, cause we recorded because we, we haven't had a legal training, uh, but um, the other trainings we did uh, in the conference room at the Boulder Police Department, Joey Those were recorded for future panel members. Yeah. Great. Flo? I think you're muted. Flo. It, might, might be, it might be valuable for you, at least um, maybe not this coming Sunday's training, but the more comprehensive trainings that are designed for new panel members and current ones who want to participate. Um, it, might, it might be worth your while to record those training sessions so that if new people come on and training is unavailable, they have a resource. Agreed. I think that's something probably eventually would be nice to have on the SharePoint or something, some level of, of the trainings, especially as we bring on, on new people. Um, I know in terms of other trainings that Flow and OIR has put together a list of kind of suggested trainings that they think for different panels has have been successful and, and helpful. So um, just wanted to give space to that as well. Flo, yeah, I don't know. Daniel, go ahead. Yeah, do we want to go ahead and just hand it over to Flo to present the, or the Flo or Amy to present the meeting training so we can get those approved today as planned? Um, well, uh, I wasn't prepared for this, but um, yeah, we, uh, the OIR group, uh, Mike and I and Teresa, and as well as uh, another member of OIR discussed uh, what, Based upon uh, my, our working with the panel, what types of training we thought would be valuable. And our focus in particular was on uh, January and February when we might still be engaged. And uh, we thought there should be, um, and this is something that city officials would be conducting uh, orientation training that covers the role of boards and commissions the history of this particular panel, a general overview of responsibilities and your authority, code of conduct, legal training. I think this could appeal, uh, could include Teresa, and I would have to talk to her, Teresa Tate, the city attorney, talking about appealing disciplinary decisions. Um, and just a review of all the, the websites and city email, the SharePoint system, how you get paid for your stipend, that sort of basic thing. That would be approximately three hours. And then um, we thought that OIR group could make a presentation. Basically, what is your job and how do you do your job? I right, titled right, role Flo. in the complaint. Yeah. Sorry, Flo, real, real quick. Sorry, I, Amy dropped off. And so, so, um, so panelists received the draft trainings document. I'm wondering if someone could throw that up on the screen for the public. Yeah, Corey, can you share that? Oh, which one is it? I, I was trying to get you in. Yeah, the it's training document. The training module proposals. Is it in the SharePoint? It, it is. is under the meeting. Okay. Oh, oh, today's meeting. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. Just share my screen. A little bit bigger. Can you all see it? Uh, it's it tiny on better. my screen, but I guess it's what we're going to do. Uh, it like enlarged the background. There you go. Now it enlarged the text. The first time it just enlarged the like the browser. Browser. Yeah. So. In fact, um, yeah, so that's some a training that city officials would conduct that would not involve OIR group. But we did work with the city in coming up with this list of topics. 
Um, and I'm, I just, in listening to the discussion, I made a note to myself that I think it might be worthwhile for Teresa Tate to discuss appealing disciplinary decisions, because that's very unique to Colorado law uh, and the collective bargaining agreement. The next one is your role in the complaint and disciplinary process. And we envision some of this being interactive, like using a, a current or from a former uh, case file and how you look at cases and how you reach decisions. Um, so this would discuss how, where the source of complaints, what happens to complaints, the, uh, where complaints go, what the role of the monitor is, uh, the monitor's role, uh, um, the department supervisory review process, and the panel's role in deciding whether to conduct a case review or not, what a case review is, um, and uh, what, and then how to do a case review, how to negotiate a case file, um, what are the different dispositions, how do you reach a, dis a decision. Um, what are the applicable, generally applicable department rules and policies? Um, what, uh, how do you reach disciplinary decisions? What the department's disciplinary policies are, including the current matrix. Um, the monitor's authority to make independent recommendations, the administrative hearing process, the chief's authority with respect to dispositions and discipline, and uh, the, group, the grievance and appeals process and arbitration, not in much, I think maybe Teresa Tate should talk, take that on in more depth. Um, we thought that there, Sergeant McNiven, who's very, as you know, integral and in the professional standards unit, they made a presentation to the panel last year. I have a copy of that PowerPoint. Um, he wants to update it and he should definitely, we think, make a presentation to the panel. Um, uh, the OIR group thought that, that the, we, we would provide a primer on civilian oversight of law enforcement. Basically what it is, the sort of the history of it, uh, what the different models are around the country and where the Boulder sort of fits in uh, within the context of what exists around the country. Uh, you know, how its powers compare to other models. It's not dissimilar to many other models, by the way. Um, uh, what makes for an effective complaint process um, and other aspects of uh, civilian oversight, including public communication strategies, outreach strategies, and successes and failures, and what OIR's lessons have been. Um, then uh, OIR also, I hope Mike, you're listening because uh, maybe uh, you want to talk about the principles of accountability module that um, you would put on. This, Mike? Um. Yeah, I mean, it, essentially, it is, it is an attempt to try and um, talk through um, beyond the nuts and bolts, but also sort of philosophically, you know, what this whole accountability system is all intended to do and mean. Um, so it's sort of getting into the purposes for the whole system and, you know, um, learning more and then using that discussion in an interactive way to try and come up with um, um, a better understanding of, of each everyone's role and how to make this as uh, effective, efficient, and helpful. Um, uh, understanding everyone has somewhat different roles, but how to um, blend those roles in a in a meaningful and uh, in helpful way. Um, so what what this would this would be interactive. This would not be a, a lecture format. And, and um, my colleague and I have done this before. And I think um, while Flo talked about the nuts and bolts of how you do the work, um, this is really a, a presentation on why you do the work and what the what the intent is and what the value is. Thank you. Um, the other training modules that are listed here are 
they were previously provided to the panel. So I just put them in. Uh, some of them are recorded. This training, how the department trains its officers on values and ethics, there's a recording and it's on the SharePoint drive. Um, anyway, well, though, those could be scheduled later in the year, but um, we were focusing on January and February uh, when we expected to probably still have a role as interim monitor. And we would kind of need the board to approve it and then we could work. We don't have to do it now. We can work with Amy and the panel. I'm sorry, I used the word board because I'm used to that, but um, the panel and Amy and try to schedule uh, without killing uh, everyone's social life, schedule a couple of these on uh, weekends in the winter. Flo, can I ask for the OIR trainings, the trainings coming specifically from y'all, um, will we be able to record those to share with future panel members or alternates? I like Mike. Absolutely. Thank you. Great. I also just wanted to flag to something that I think would be important. Oh, sorry, Taisha, I missed your hand. Um, if you'd like to go first, feel free. Oh, well, thank you. Um, so I guess, you know, I really love the flow of this and I, I do, pun intended, and I do, um, again, I think one of the challenges of the last session um, was, you know, not enough focus on the oversight role. Um, and so I really can see that gap being filled in a, in a variety of different ways and balancing out. I also love using recordings of trainings that are already done instead of repeating them. I mean, we can certainly improve or do the next version, but certainly don't want to keep doing one on one and, and, and really leveraging those recordings. I do have some concerns around just how many total hours we're trying, because unlike when we did our first round, when we were doing that, we were also doing bylaws, but now we have case reviews, which, you know, I think is more, I mean, I mean, I just, so I'm, I'm just more mindful about the time period, you know, between the um, other um, requirements of the role um, and the training. The other piece is I felt like it was very front loaded, all of our training. And so having, instead of, you know, everything was in the first like three to four months, um, and so I'm also curious if there's a kind of a, uh, coming from an education background, a, a scope and sequence or kind of pacing around when, you know, is it more appropriate to have certain items, um, you know, what what's the priority, you know, and, and just kind of from that perspective as well as you're putting it together. So, I mean, it would also maybe helpful to have kind of a table with just how many hours and, you know, who's facilitating what. I'd also love, um, you know, again, to explore, uh, obviously, the OIR group, and I know, Flo, you work with Nicole, but we do have a membership, and I'm curious what other trainings we may be able to get from them, from people who haven't actually worked so directly with us, um, so that we have a little bit more balance. So those are some of my initial comments and reflections, but in general, I'm just really blown away by um, how this dress addresses my primary concern from the previous training series. Thank you. Well, I appreciate your questions, Taisha. Um, we we put these in an order that we thought would be value. We actually put them in the order we thought they should be provided. Um, there is, um, in fact, in one session, I uh, put in a footnote where there's a free, it's, there's a free NACL webinar. I actually did conducted it, but it's available on the website and it's about how to analyze evidence and reach dispositions and burden of proof. That's free. There are other trainings on the NACOL website. I can go back over and see what would be valuable, but you can definitely take advantage of free NACOL trainings in your free time that might, you know, they are on a whole variety of topics then they're under training and webinars on the NACOL website. Thank you. I appreciate that. And, and again, I think there was also, though, because we are members, too, so I'm, I'm fine with actually paying for things that we need. Um, and so, you know, we have this relationship with OIR now. But as the panel moves on, you know, we also want to just think about sustainability and who's going to be doing the trainings and those kinds of things. And so we'd really love to maximize that relationship after yeah. we, you know, if we don't have this relationship with you all anymore. So it's, um, well, just we, we and Nicole have been discussing, 
you know, developing a paywall for certain recorded trainings we have oh. that are not available for free, but we haven't done that yet. And Nicole's training is typically um, with the training that Nicole most frequently does is on what is civilian oversight and models and um, that it's, it's not, we don't do for use of force training, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. It's typical that the police departments provide the same type of training for their officers that mm -hmm. and provide that to the board or panel. Mm -hmm. Um, and sorry, I know that you have a, a question still in the hopper, um, Ariel, but I just had a follow up around um, the opportunity as well to um, maybe even engage with more community members and community organizations that um, have acute issues or, you know what I mean, I think like juvenile and social workers, um, you know, I think I, there may be some opportunities to do um, those kinds of um, you know, uh, you know, I'm thinking of Jen over at Feet for Forward, and you know, again, you know, I, I think there might be some opportunities to um, do those kinds of. Uh, and again, I don't know if there would be so much training. The other piece is, you know, I would also like to add kind of a training schedule, and to that, that would be the annual conference that NACOL holds, and any other kind of additional training opportunities that may be available to those who serve on oversight panels, but it may not be specific to Boulder. Thank you. Thanks. Um, I want to, I recognize, I see that Amy, Victor, and Sarah have their um, hands up, and I just want to jump in quickly to say that, uh, Corey, just for note-taking, that I think one of the biggest things for the new panel and the new co-chairs is going to be figuring out the schedule, as Taisha just, just raised to, um, of what is the timing like of this. I will say that I felt like our trainings were a little bit while we got everything we needed, I think, or a lot of trainings we needed, and Joey was was new to the role too here, that it was a little bit haphazard in terms of tracking who was actually at which trainings. There wasn't, you know, like a sheet kind of of, of here's all your trainings and and these are the ones you have to do and and here's the ones that are recorded that you could watch on your own time. Um, and I think that would be really helpful for us to have kind of a systematic schedule. And I think also something that will have to be determined is which panelists need to do trainings over again and how often we're thinking that people need a refresher on trainings versus what are one and dones you've done it and you don't need it or you can attend optionally and which are kind of mandatory I think is going to be um especially with these new ones from NACOL too is going to have to be a determination as considering people's time commitments as well so so what's optional what's not and um, are there ones that could just be kind of refreshers uh, that you can opt into? So I, I'm just gonna go down from what I see. So, so on my screen, I see Victor first. Yeah, I just wanted to say on the first training, the orientation, um, it would be awesome if one of someone from the panel was there for that orientation as they talk about um, just what it means to be on the panel and is pre presented by city of Boulder officials. Um, or just the idea that one of us is sort of like mentoring people through this versus like, oh my God, what is all this that we have to do? Um, I was in the interview process and, um, you know, the last question that we asked him was sort of about this time commitment. And people weren't really made aware of how much time commitment it is. Um, and so we did do some follow-up emails to folks, let them know that there is a commitment. But again, we don't want the shock and awe um, of just all this in the beginning on top of case files. The second one is to that, that sort of comment about haphazard. Um, some of those recordings are also haphazard. I remember Joey fiddling with his iPhone and, and whatnot. So my point is, I'm not sure the quality of some of those recordings, so they may have to go back um, and just be looked at to make sure they're up to standard. And then the use of force training, um, it's a critical training that done in person in the officer's training facility was very impactful. And so um, like that can't be recorded and watched in video. Uh, you need to see in person how officers use force, how they decide to use force. And so I would say that some of these simply just can't be viewed, but need to be, you know, seen in person 
um, because use of force is one of these things that we talk about. So being able to understand how they operate using that um, is very important. And that's all I have. Sorry, uh, Sarah. Um, at the risk of being contrarian, um, and I do agree with Victor on some of the some of the trainings. For instance, use of force is very interesting. I am more and more concerned at the uh, overall explosion of long trainings and additional committees, sort of two topics, but uh, for instance, the training this Sunday that is what, two hours, could be a memo, do's and don'ts. And I'm wondering how much time, we haven't even discussed a single case and it's been an hour. So where are we on focusing on the core role of this panel versus discussing taking hours and hours and hours of out training for what should be a citizen panel? I think that's just my, my commentary. Yeah. I I appreciate that, and that's something that's been on my mind, Sarah, is the 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 efficiency <laughs> of our trainings. And that's why, you know, with the Sunday training, it's 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 in an, an inefficient way of doing it. But I think I think it's a good example of how a failure in training in the panel threatens the mission. And when we have when we don't have the information we need, and when we we don't have the information we need on how to conduct case reviews and uh, and to to do the business of the panel, it, it threatens our mission. And so that's one of the with the orientation training, I think, in particular, getting that training on how boards um, function for our new panel members from the outset. I think that's crucial to get that out of the way so that we can get onto the mission. And that was part of the thinking with Sunday. And the reason we needed to do it so soon is to get up to speed very quickly so that we can get on mission and back to doing the work with the comfort and confidence that we have the information we need to do the work well and, and at our full capacity. Amy? I was just going to chime in during the NACL discussion that um, y'all need to create your logins when you sign into the NACL website, but your names have been submitted to the city list. Great, thank you. Um, anything else on this right now? I think we have Hadassah's hand. Oh, Hadassah, sorry, the, you know, little thing on the side, the view thing. Awesome. No worries. Thanks. Um, I uh, just wanted to say that I uh, really appreciate um, this training list that Flo has put together. I think it's awesome and really comprehensive um, and honestly, you know, helps fill in some of the gaps having been to specifically some NACL training, um, been at the conference. They are unbelievably helpful in ways that I cannot express. And so um I think that having more educated panelists is never going to hurt us. Um, and, uh, you know, it's it's part of the work personally. That's how I feel. So thank you. Great. Um, I would recommend we take our break now, just looking at the time before we move to committee reports so we don't have to splinter them up. Um, and yeah, that, that way we can take our break and then get through, get through all the committee reports. So five minutes and we'll get back at 7.30. Does that work for everyone? Everyone see I didn't mess up the time? Great.
All right, everyone, if you could start making your way back. Thank you. And I will be handing over to Daniel for the second half of the meeting. Amy, is that an old hand or a new hand you have raised? Ancient. Ancient hand, thank you. Okay, uh, in that case, uh, uh, welcome back panel members. We're gonna move on to our committee reports. Um, or sorry, the, we we did have one last. So the one last thing with uh, B, uh, BPOP training, um, we sound like a, a teen band. Uh, can we go ahead and vote now to um, to have Amy and Flo uh, proceed with beginning to to work with us to schedule these trainings? Um, so that's the motion. Uh, so a motion to approve Flo and Amy to move forward with the yeah, Taisha. I'm sorry, I just don't feel good about putting a training timeline together without the new training the panelists to let us know. I mean, I think. The availability should go before. So, are you just more so saying these are the areas that we agree on, or? I, yeah, sorry. I yeah. Okay. So, th just voting to um to authorize Amy and Flo to begin coordinating those meetings between us and the new panel members. Um, so to to start so that so uh, what am I saying? Uh, we approve this flow of trainings and to have Flo and Amy begin the work of getting them scheduled uh, with the new panelists and us. Oh, I'm not sure if I'm quite there yet, because I do feel like, again, the issue with the timing hasn't been addressed. Uh, we haven't decided which is mandatory and which aren't. Um, and we didn't decide which were in person and which were versatile. So, I mean, I can, so I'm, I'm, that's where I'm, I'm torn. Great. How would you suggest we proceed then? Um, you know, I, I mean, we can give them approval. Thank you. You know, I, is it possible to get another iteration? Chico has his hand up. Do you have a recommendation? Yeah, I, I'm thinking that uh, not putting a timeline to this, what we should be approving is the material or the training that is supposed to be undertaken. That's what we should right. be voting on, not the but timeline. Not necessarily the, the actual time frame yeah. for the trainings or whether, right? So that's the logistical framing, but more so just the topic areas prove the I subject about that. yeah I'd add that? yeah amy go ahead um i might suggest that the orientation though be scheduled sooner than later with the new panelists oh yeah. which we can coordinate as soon as they get approval at the end of next week so then so great so the motion then motion to approve the topics um which of course means we can add topics later but to go ahead and approve these topics and to authorize Amy and Flo to get our orientation training on the books. Yeah. Any other uh, thoughts? Yeah, Victor. I think that should also include the second training. They also the two to three hour, the role on the complaint in disciplinary process. It seems like just an easy foundational training. Um, if the expectation is they'll be doing case reviews in March and sooner than that, um, you kind of need to know why we're here. And based on the interviews, um, people don't know what we here what we're here to do. So just to clear that misunderstanding up early. Got it. And so, sorry, I'm just pulling this up to double check so I can announce the full name of the training. So the motion is to prove topics and to ask Amy and Flo to schedule the BPOP orientation training and the BPOP's role in the complaint and discipl disciplinary process training. Just waiting for any, if anyone has any thoughts, giving it some thinking time. Cool, is there a second for that motion then? Uh, two seconds, um, second square. Uh, all in favor, hands. Boom, boom, boom. And that's a majority. Thank you. Thank you, Amy and Flo and the whole, whole, whole OI. Wow. Um, should have done my <laughs> uh, warm up beforehand. Uh, thank you the, to the whole OIR group and Amy for getting this all set up. Um, and and thank you in advance panel panelists for committing to these trainings. I do know it's, it's a heavy lift, but it's an important one for us.
so moving ahead through our agenda, um, moving on to committee reports, I'm going to hand it off to Victor and Taisha, co-chairs of community, community Engagement and Communications Committee. Awesome. One moment. Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And Sarah, you'll be happy to know that we are consolidating the governance and communications into one <laughs> conversation. And perhaps as we think of, sorry, ways to let me get this on the screen there, um, we can uh, find some other uh, economies of scale around that. So um, just wanted to talk about. Um, and actually tag team with Hadassah on the governance committee. So um, I was able to participate in the governance committee as the communications liaison. Um, and um, we were able to um, chat about some, some issues related to transparency and ongoing case review protocols. So I will go ahead and turn it over to Hadassah to give us a little bit more there there, um, and particularly as it relates to some of the issues that we've been facing, so. Yep, thank you. Let me just pull up my notes. So I am speaking directly. Okay, so you are talking about the transparency specifically. So we were looking through, so a couple of things. Um, specifically for governance, we're going to be kind of modifying the way that we do our meeting. And like I mentioned earlier, um, specifically approaching you know, having sort of three, three, three sections that we're sort of tackling um, and putting together proposals at minimum annually. Um, it could be, you know, maybe quarterly or biannually for for bylaws more frequently. But I think for ordinance, um, an annual proposal would be ideal. Um, for you know, and like I said, for bylaws, we can look at that. But but basically, we would have anything that we like a running log, these are the things that we want to update, these are the amendments we want to make, put them into play. And so the, the three sections, like I said, would be the ordinance section, bylaw section, and then our um, other section um, specifically. And so like things that uh, are sort of in the policy or greater recommendations that um, aren't necessarily within the scope of our ordinance or our bylaws, so things that are directly within our control, but things that we would need to work with the community um, to, to do, to complete, right? And so um, those kinds of things, you know, we look, we were looking in the ordinance and specifically the, the, the two items that were um, of interest were section um, 2117F4. So we're talking about um, sorry, let me get the, uh, the section that, title. That's the Incident Specific Community Forum. Yes, yes, yes. I'm looking for the title of the, so that's specifically the Police Oversight Powers and Duties section. Um, and point four says that we may conduct periodic evaluations of the complaint intake and handling system to identify process improvements um, and, sorry, you did make it so I can share. Let me do that. Oh, no, I cannot share. We'll add it in the meeting notes. Okay, perfect. Um, so basically that's that's the ordinance, but it talks about specifically that we can conduct periodic evaluations of our intake and handling system and um, identify process improvements and ensure the complaints are being treated fairly and with due diligence. So that is completely within our scope. And I think that's something that we would um, really appreciate working with the community on and you know getting some community input and it, those kinds of things and what other methods we wanna figure out for gathering good information um, and for doing our evaluations. Um, anything else to add to that one, Taisha? Okay, Oops. perfect. And then um, the other one was the community concerns. Is that where we are? Okay, perfect. And then 2117G, which is also within our powers and duty section, um, G1 says that we may provide a forum uh, to 
gather community concerns about incident specific police actions and may receive and forward complaint information to the monitor's office for processing. Um, so we, you know, that's, I think I can let Taisha talk about, but we were we were talking about specifically working with the community. Um, you know, it specifically mentions gathering a forum for the community, and so that is something that the community outreach outreach committee um, and Taisha, as part of that committee, was interested in. And I will hand it back to you. Sorry, that was very long. Well, we're signing. We gotta be able to talk to each other, and and not everybody to be able to make every committee meeting. So, um, so yes. Yeah. And I think this came up because we did get after all of the confidentiality and, you know, we were, you know, asked to to stop on any meeting with more than two members unless it was a monthly meeting or a committee meeting. So we really wanted to um, make sure that that wasn't going to stop us from, we had already initially had had a community meeting scheduled in December, but because of that, we put it on pause. So we're excited to work with others um to to be able to get something on the books and also maybe even have it be a part of the meet and greet with new panelists and you know kind of a, a larger conversation around the status and what we've seen and what they want to see uh, we also wanted to acknowledge um be pop in the news with several articles written um about the police oversight panel as well as the boulder police regar department regarding the latest cases um, that the chiefs did not sustain um, the BIPOC, rec BIPOC recommendations um, related to the, the case with the, the five officers, as well as the online submission complaint file, um, tech issues, and the resignation of Martha Wilson. And so um, we also were able to um, start discussions around multiple communication pathways to re-engage with the NAACP of Boulder County, County in light of uh, their critical role in the revision to the ordinance, participation on the selection committee and their leadership in the communities that we serve. Um, we also uh, talked about- Sorry, uh, can you topic... go back to the last Sorry. slide? I found my hand of up. Course. Just a question. Um, the monthly updates to city council and their board book and dashboard, has that been yes. discussed before? Uh, my apologies, I just, uh, I skipped over that. So um, in addition, um, sorry, Hadass, I forgot to continue the community, the governance update. We talk, and actually we have been talking about this. Um, I actually brought it up at the last um, monthly meeting um, as a strategy that is used in other places and already in Boulder boards and commissions have um, an update, not all of them, but many of them do. And so um, I know that the city manager's office was considering a quarterly update, but considering how fast things moved, we thought that it would be more appropriate to have a monthly update. And then the dashboard actually refers to that beautiful table that Joe uh, sorry, that flow put together with the case studies and the reviews. And, you know, I just, that was the dashboard that I had hoped for when we had just discussed something like that when Joey was on board and we had initially started. So that's what that was referencing specifically. Um, we have talked to the city, um, the city manager's office and, um, you know, that is something that they can accommodate. And, and also this wasn't only for transparency with city council, but also that notice and information is available to the public as well. So they're not always have to go into our website, but we're giving multiple pathways for them to gather information. Any other questions? Awesome. All right, we also talked about the chief meeting and it was a real honor to be able to facilitate that conversation. Um, always really helpful. Those are public meetings, but they are not recorded. So it's really um, important to, for you to be there. But um, some of the conversations that we had were about the complaint system being down for months. Um, the um, city office of technology, um, Jennifer Dugan did an exceptional um, presentation providing us with more background of where the status of their technology and their tracking systems were um, when they uh, both um, chief, the chief and the office, the, the um, office of technology are relatively new in the last two and a half years. And so um, it was mind blowing to to realize that there were as many structures in place as it related to data collection and transparency, et cetera, and to see uh, what they provided was really wonderful. I don't know if the presentation that she provided is available, but I thought that would be really helpful. We also talked about um, the panel um, confidentiality and transparency tensions um, and really had a great 
Um, again, the obviously the open meetings conversation, um, but that's also where we discussed um, perhaps the opportunity to put things into writing if there's any kind of questions on an ongoing case that case review. Um, and so the governance committee will continue to work on that as far as a potential bylaw um, so that if the chief or anybody else similar to as we're reviewing the cases, if we have a question to the professional standards unit, we put those questions in writing. And um, again, we want no impression of intimidation or anything like that. So we have to be very mindful of that. Um, we also got an update about the ordinance. So thank you, Daniel, for sharing um, the update that Teresa is making, just the first go um, that will help us with some of our communications and cleanup um, now that we've been in it for a couple of, year, a couple of years. Um, the resignation of Martha, and it's really been tremendous. Uh, Martha did participate in our governance training, uh, governance committee meeting, um, and has been very communicative about um, working in tandem as it relates to um, the updates to the ordinance and continuing to push on those areas that we all um, are, 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 are hold dear to us and, and want to activate around. Um, it was also powerful to hear from the chief around how she sees the panel in five to 10 years. Uh, one of the cake takeaways from that conversation was wanting to, when you see police, that they are here to help you. I mean, that's a simple but really powerful vision, and um, it was really um, wonderful to, to have that. Um, a conversation about the chop shops and how com com complicated that is and registration for bikes and all kinds of things. So there's going to be a huge communication effort around that and then any kind of new powers. And again, that conversation kind of devolved into the role of the arbitrator and getting more information around that so that the panel can make stronger recommendations, particularly when we're recommending ter termination, which tends to be the area where we disagree with the chief, if at all. Um, anything that I missed from the chief meeting? I don't know, Dan, if you had another item, but while we're here, I just figured we can- um, There were you know, we public the cases at the meeting. So I wanna make sure that's clear that there, there are quite a few members of the public. Present. Oh, okay. Oh, awesome. And I might have just seen that because I was online also. Yeah, present. We just, we we didn't do public comment, but announced that, of course, we do a public comment this uh, at these meetings. Um, but I was just going to say, Taisha, thank you for sharing the update specifically on the police chief meeting. I think that's a good idea for us to continue doing going forward at these meetings. And that's it. Victor, did I miss anything or anything to add? You also co-facilitated the meeting with the chief, and um, it was really helpful to, to have um, that support. Uh, no, there's nothing I would add. Um, and she did talk about um, trying to increase interactions, and so that's why that invitation to that ceremony came to our emails, because it was, uh, again, just the theme of being able to um, just you know, see what they're doing over there, um, and not just meeting once a month, but having some sort of relationship, um, and that's it. Victor, do you mind for the public just sharing what ceremony it is and what email came? Um, so there's a new cadet ceremony um, that's happening, like a graduation ceremony. Um, so all the panel members were invited to um, attend that in person. Daniel, I think you're muted. <laughs> I'm just talking to myself, y'all. Uh, Hadassah, did you have anything more to add for governance? I just want to make sure. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, so I think we will um, basically have proposals together. What were one question we had was about the so for ordinance amendment proposals, um, we were kind of hoping to also, um, you know, take a look at maybe some information from the annual report and kind of seeing if there's anything we can glean from that. Um, and so wondering with the timing of 2022's annual report would be. Yes, that's right. Um, you know, theoretically, nothing, no like hard, hard date, obviously, but more just kind of like um, what we're, if, if we have an, a potential time frame or who is going to be putting that together or all of those, all of those questions. So 
And that, yeah, and, the, and then the annual report will be, <laughs> it's just occurring to me, that'll be the new co-chairs who work with the monitor to produce that. But of course, I'll still be here if, you know, to to advise it how it happened last go around um, since Joey and Ariel won't be here. So um, here is a resource for that for sure. Wonderful. I will notate it there and we will bring it up again in our next meeting and see what kind of um, timing we can get for for that. So so basically, like I mentioned before, we're looking at once, you know, ideally annual recommendations um, for ordinance updates. Those would go to the city, of course. Those are not for us. And so, um, you know, we can kind of formalize a process for putting these sort of amendments together, but basically we have, um, that's what, that's what we're thinking, working with community, working with, um, legal, working with, um, city manager, working with basically any parties that will want to work with us, um, to help make sure that we have considered, um, any potential ordinance updates that we would like to see, um, for the city. So yes, Amy, I see your hand is up. Yeah, thank you so much for that. Um, so I think a couple of folks have been um, in the conversation about having Martha help facilitate that work. And that was one of the things we just need approval from this, um, this panel on. Yes, Teresa is working on just some of those immediate changes. But the further changes, the hope would be that we would start those once that the panel has been seated and the new independent monitor. And then I would work with Martha to kind of start scoping what that plan looks like for the timeline, hoping to start launching that in first quarter of 2023. Regarding the annual reports that happened last year, I believe in April. So we're gonna have to work how we make that happen this year. Um, and hopefully concert, if we don't have an independent monitor at that point, um, Flo, perhaps we can talk about what that might look like and in the involvement with OAR. I have a hand up about the annual report. So I think, remember, yeah, yeah. Hadassah, I think the last year it didn't come out officially until June or something. Did it come out in April? I didn't think it came out. That I can't, early. I'm really like, and, I, and again, it was the first one and all the things yeah. that I just, I think the reason why Hadassah and I had talked about March is because we just felt like it, it was too late last year. And and mm -hmm. how do we speed that up? So again, Dan, part, you know. Part of the reason it was late last year as well, we postponed it because we needed to hit a hard reset on um, working with HR in the in the panels. Um, so, sorry, backing up. So the co-chairs facilitated the assessment of the monitor. So the annual assessment of the monitor that goes into the report. Um, and so Ariel and I um, needed to uh, step back and work closer with HR to make that happen. And so I think that postponed the report by as much as two months because um, uh, uh, we wanted to get it right and we wanted to make sure it was done right and built on a good precedent the first time around. So so the report was actually released a couple months later than Joey had initially um, intended it. So, so just, just providing that background and reminder. I'm also and seeing I shake your head flow. And I, I think our thinking with the having some community meetings and conversations to get the, you know, and again, it could be in tandem with the city's office, but um, was to inform the annual report and the recommendations that we're making there. And then that would be one part that would be included to this larger city conversation and some of the other stakeholders. So that was the initial thinking there. Got it. Yes, wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. And I think, you know, we were we were hoping for within the first quarter. And so, you know, if we can, you know, March, April, I think that would that would definitely help us. And so um, the idea is that we would do um, sort of this, like I said, annual inventory once a year, do this proposal. Um, so this would be moving forward, not just for this year, um, but every single year. Um, we would want to review both the ordinance and our bylaws and make sure that we are buttoning up every anything that needs to be buttoned up, answering any questions, um, and also not trying to um, do a bunch of different, you know, clogging everything else up. And so we want to kind of streamline that review process um, and the uh, amendment process, basically. So that's what we are proposing, um, annual review for both of those. Um, and 
I think as long as the panel is okay with that, then that's what the governance committee will move forward with. Is that something we need to vote on officially? I would appreciate a vote. <laughs> and one thing I was going to mention too, we didn't get there before Joey had left, but his intention, um, and I think the panel's preference was for, in addition to the annual report, to be doing quarterly uh, uh, smaller reports from the monitor. Um, and so that's something to keep in mind as well, is that you know that's something we hadn't launched yet, and so that we might get that back on track. But yeah. Um, Hadassah, do you want to... Um, just clearly restate the motion and we'll get a second and then a vote for it. Yes, yes. The motion is um, annual proposals um, from annual like compilation and proposals to city council for ordinance and to the panel for bylaws um, for amendment motions. Basically, uh, you know, aside from anything that may come up that's urgent, obviously we have that power, um, but this would be sort of once a year send a document in an email, everyone would look at it, you know, we would do an official vote in an, in a in a meeting, basically, is is the motion. Is that a second, Taisha, or a question? It's a second. Thank you. Uh, all in favor, hands. One, two, three, four, five, six, which is a majority, so moved. Um, Hadassah, does that complete your governance report? That is everything. We did not have any members of the public. It was just Taisha and I, um, and Martha popped in for a moment. And so um, that being said, we definitely welcome the public to any of our community meetings. They are all posted. Um, the virtual links and everything is on there. Um, and we definitely welcome any and all input. We appreciate it. So thank you. That's all I have. Thanks, Hadassa. And so um, Martha Wilson, who hit, who recently resigned, was our chair of uh, the Legacy Review Committee. And so one of our top priorities when we bring our new panelists on will be, of course, assigning panelists to new committees, um, but then also electing a new chair for the Legacy Review Committee. Taisha, is that on old hand or a new hand in the air? Old hand, sorry. All right, no. Lower hand, so. <laughs> I will say uh, just real quick for legacy. We did not have a meeting this yeah. month. Um, I did have the link live, so in case anyone from the public wanted to pop in, it was available. But other than that, um, that's it. Thanks, Adasa. And I see Chico. Chico first, then Sarah. Thank you. Yeah, I I, I just looked at our calendar, and there, there's two meetings for legacy in one month. For the first and the twenty second, is that right? That doesn't look right. Somewhere. No, it should only be once a month. But we'll, well, I think we'll firm up the date once we have hopefully new uh, committee members, and then we can pick the exact date. Um, but for now, we'll have um, Corey updated to just once. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Adas. Awesome. Thanks, Chico. Uh, Sarah, yeah. Um, out of curiosity, the leg, the legacy committee is meant to review old cases. Yes. Uh, Hadassah, do you want to answer? Sorry. I saw you nod. Sure. Um, so it was for, um, the section of the ordinance that is specifically for data and historical review. So like more, um, big picture trending, um, metadata analysis as opposed to specific case analysis and kind of looking at you know trends that we see um moving forward that way and to and and to reiterate that you know the disc uh the memo um the ordinance gives us the grants us the authority to review cases before the chief has made a final determination on them um at which point it becomes a a, a case that's outside of our authority Okay. A specific case, I should, yeah. Um, other thoughts, questions? Well, okie dokie then. Thank you, committee chairs. Um, and I really look forward to you all having many more members <laughs> once we have brought on our, our many new members that are coming aboard. I think we're, um, we're feeling the, uh, 
um, we're feeling the strain, I know, and I just wanted to take a minute in the committee section to express my gratitude for getting through this year um, and the extraordinary work you all have done on the committees. Um, and and I really look forward to to filling our ranks in January, plus those those new members uh, on top of the nine we used to have um, to take that load off. Um, and committee chairs in particular, thank you for everything you've done and all your service. Um, you're just extraordinary. Um, I will go ahead and hand it over now to the interim independent monitor report. All yours, Flo. Uh, can you uh, allow me to share the screen? Just one second. Thank you, co-host. Okay. You should be good to go now. Hi, everyone. Um, on behalf of the OIR group, I'm Florence Finkel, the Inter Interim Independent Police Monitor. I, most of you know, but I just want to make sure everyone knows that beginning December 14th through the end of the year, I will be out of the country and Teresa Magula from OIR group, who's in attendance today, will be taking over. And there are already two case reviews scheduled for that time. Um, with respect to uh, the full case file review data, the panel completed three full case file reviews in November. Uh, there, none of them are pending. Um, there are no uh, panel case reviews pending department disposition. We have two case reviews scheduled and five are pending scheduling uh, when the department completes its eternal investigation. I have a number of cases uh, which to report on where the panel conducted a full case file review and the department um, made uh, its final determination. The first is a serious misconduct case 03, 003 of 2022. And in this case, um, officer was in a patrol car in a parking garage when a car uh, saw the police car, it reversed course and did not stop. The officer improperly used a stationary vehicle immobilization maneuver, also called a pinch, that's used to um, pin a car at slow speed. He arrested the occupants at gunpoint without probable cause because he suspected that the car was stolen and he did not activate his body-worn camera when required. Um, there were a number of allegations, improper arrest, improper use of the pinch maneuver, and not turning on a body-worn camera when required. The panel recommended that all these allegations be sustained, and the panel recommended termination. It also recommended that the department ensure that all officers understand what a proper pinch maneuver is. In this case, uh, the OIR group as independent um, interim monitor, we agreed with, we made an independent recommendation. We agreed with the panel that all the allegations should be sustained, but we differed on the discipline. Uh, we recommended that the officer be suspended for seven to 10 days, be retrained on probable cause and the law of arrest and the pinch maneuver and the activation of body-worn camera requirements. And we also recommended that the officer be put on a performance improvement plan. The department agreed with the dispositions of the panel and the monitor uh, and sustained the allegations, but the department imposed a five-day suspension and also required the officer to undergo eight hours of legal and tactical training. Yeah, in the next case, um, a member of an administrative staff member of the records unit within the department inadvertently 
copied a second requester on the first requester's email and thereby disclosing an unrelated party's email and uh, email chain to an unrelated requester. When I say requester, these folks were seeking public records from the department. Uh, the panel recommended that the uh, rule one customer service value allegation be sustained and that the employee receive a verbal counseling. It also made some recommendations with respect to how the manager should handle employee errors when the manager learns of them and that the department look at how they use this group email in the records unit. The department agreed with sustaining the allegation and the um, outcome was verbal counseling. In another case, the panel reviewed um, officers were responded to a call about uh, individuals who had been sleeping in a parking garage and they had left all their belongings. Those individuals were gone when the officers arrived and then the officers left the garage when they are, were approached by um, an individual who asked about his friend's belongings in the garage and how they could get them back. During the conversation with the officers, one officer threatened to arrest the individual if the individual didn't provide information about his friends. And the next day, when the individual saw a different officer, a sergeant, he made a complaint and also said that um, he was that the he was a victim of bias-based policing. Um, so there were each officer was accused of bias-based of biased policing, and one of the officers. Uh, with making a threat of arrest that was unjustified. The uh, biased policing allegations, the panel recommended that the department not sustain them, but they did recommend sustaining the threat of arrest and recommended verbal counseling and retraining. And the department agreed, except with respect to the biased policing allegations, they, um, they were unfounded by the department. And finally, in a case, uh, case, uh, a woman and her teenage son came to the department. They were having problems with um, the managers who were managing her, her apartment complex, and they wanted to file a report um, to help facilitate a transfer to another housing complex. Uh, the officer interacted with the woman for about 40 minutes. Um, when the woman eventually obtained a copy of the report, she made a complaint that the officer had been condescending to her and the report was inaccurate. The panel recommended that each allegation against the officer, customer service and report writing not be sustained. And that was how the department reached a different, that's the same determination the department reached. As uh, discussed with the, in, with the, the panel at discussed at the panel's meeting with the chief on Monday, the online complaint system where people can file online complaints against officers and make commendations, it was uh, not functioning between um, the beginning of May 2022 until the end of October 2022. There were a total of 16 forms that were submitted. This includes three referrals. And I just want to say that when I learned about this, uh, promptly I asked the department to provide a memorandum about what the situation was, how many forms we were talking about, and promptly notified the panel and uh, the city city manager's office. Um, and took on we took on the responsibility of making sure that the department properly handled these forms. Um, so of the 16, there were three referrals, one accommodation that was submitted on the wrong form, one was a duplicate of a misconduct case already under investigation, and one wasn't a complaint at all, it was just providing information. I reviewed um, 10 of the 16, and I've already, the monitors already classified four as misconduct cases and six as community inquiries. And finally, in November, we um, the way the department's database works is these complaints that were filed previously and hadn't been uh, 
been received by the department, they're included in this uh, November total. That's why it's pretty high. The number of complaints received in November were 13 total, five misconduct, one serious misconduct, seven community inquiries. Um, as of so far in this month, there's no complaints that have been filed. And um, the open docket as of December 6th, and this includes the monitor's docket and the panel's docket is 16. That completes my report. Thanks, Flo. Uh, panel members, any questions on the report? Just giving it a thinking minute. Okay. What was the panel's recommendation on that very first case? Uh, the car, the car case. The panel recommended uh, the officer be terminated. The monitor's recommendation was seven to 10 days and the department imposed five day suspension. So, so Flo, just may, maybe I'm missing something. So in the first case, we had the panel, the monitor and the department. So on the other cases, we only have the panel and the, there's no monitor's recommendation. Correct. Um, the monitor has the authority to make an independent recommendation on dispositions and discipline. And it's my understanding that Joey Lapari did not do that often, but I don't really know. Uh, I, um, we have done it this one time and because we did not agree with the, we we're pretty far off. We did not agree with the panel disciplinary recommendation. And uh, I can tell you that OIR group, we've discussed the matter and whenever we diverge uh, from, whenever we decide we're gonna make an independent recommendation, we are going to share that uh, recommendation to the panel. So the panel who, who were, the panel members that reviewed that case, I provided the, the monitors independent recommendation to those panel members. Thank you. Yeah, I can say on uh, as one of those panel members too, uh, just that uh, I appreciated flow both the way you worked collaboratively and maintained the independence of the panel and the monitor in that process. Um, so that just, just appreciation for that. You're welcome. Any other questions, comments, concerns? Ah, new friends. Hello, new friend. <laughs> um, great. Uh, next up uh, is our selection of cases. Oh, sorry, Hadassah. Yeah. Real quick. Um, yeah. And if I can just, so the, no, actually, never mind. Nope. Done. <laughs> No worries, no worries. Um, great, so we're gonna move on to um, selecting our case reviews. And just a quick notice for the public, um, what we're about to do is, uh, um, so uh, the independent monitor has pre pre prepared case summaries based on complaints made by community members or internally from the police department, uh, complaints against the police department. And so what we're reviewing are case summaries and not just summaries of the initial complaint themselves. This could, these summaries include anything like police camera footage, available evidence, any initial investigations that have begun, other complaints, uh, extenuating, extenuating circumstances. We won't be sharing the details of these cases with you yet um, because they are protected, um, they're confidential, protecting everyone involved. Uh, so we will be reading out the case numbers and voting for them. But as you saw, um, each month, the uh, independent monitor uh, reads out and presents the cases that have been completed uh, for the public. So this is um, uh, uh, so confidential for now. Uh, and so with that, panelists, and hopefully you use my vamp time to pull up the document flow sent us, we're going to start with uh, case, oh, let me make sure I'm at the top of the page. Uh, MI 2022 028 
dash N O. And the allegations uh, are uh, against two officers. That's a rule one, uh, two rule ones against officer one and two rule ones against officer two. Uh, oh, sorry, Ariel, did you have a question? Hi, yeah, I just want to flag that Sarah just let me know that she has lost um, Zoom access at the, <clears throat> she's on a work trip in the building she's at right now. So she's attempting to figure that out, but I wanted to um, make that clear before we start voting. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Hadassah. Yeah, I wonder if someone was just typing in that document. Yeah, uh, panelists, that is a shared document. <laughs> um, uh, and I think, yeah, thank you. Uh, let's give Sarah just a minute. Oh, she's gone totally. She said she doesn't know if she'll be able to get back on. Okay, let's go ahead. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. We have a quorum. Yeah, so we still have a quorum. So let's go ahead and proceed then. Um, and so, ooh, and oh, there's Sadas. <laughs> Sadas's lost power. Um, it is eight seventeen, right? So all the technology decides to to give a kaput. Uh, okay. Um, so starting with uh, panelists, MI two zero two two dash zero two eight. Uh, officer one, two rule one violations. Officer two, two rule one violations. Show of hands to do a full review of this case. That's one from Hadassah. Thank you. Panelist show of hands not to do a full review of this case. That's one, two, three, four, five. We will not review MI2022-028. Next up is M2022-007. The allegations, this is uh, for officer one, is four rule ones and a rule six. For officer two, that's three rule ones. For officer three, that's one rule one. Panelists, show of hands to review this, do a full review of this case. Actually, that was me too. One, two, three, four, thank you. Panelists, show of hands not to do a full review of this case. That's one, thank you. So the yeses have it, we will review. <clears throat> SM2022-007. Next up is MI2022-029. That is three rule one complaints against officer one. Panelists show of hands to do a full review of this case. Panelists show of hands not to do a full review of this case. Thank you. The no's have it. So we will not review MI2022-029. Next up is MI2022-030. This is one officer, three rule one complaints. Panelists show of hands to review this case. Thank you. That's one. Panel show of hands not to do a full review of this case. The no's have it, so we will not review MI2022-030. And that is it. Thank you, panelists. Uh, yeah, Flo? Can we uh, have volunteers for 007 and 
You have, you'll have to be on the panel. I think this is, this case is going to take a while. And no, it's, I'm sorry. I just had questions. Yeah. I wasn't raising it's, my hand. Um, it will take a lot of time to review, I believe. Got it. <laughs> pa panelists, volunteers to review that case ending 007. Yeah, Flo, you can put me on that. And Hadassah, that's a, that's a yes to review. Thanks. Okay. Just making sure it's not a question hand. Do we have a third panelist? Put Sarah on it. <laughs> we it's, it's, Sarah is very amicable, so I, I uh, is always ready. To just jump texted on. feel feel free to assign me to whatever cases need people. That's Sarah. So we got <laughs> Sarah. Sorry, I can't get back on. <laughs> Thank you, Ariel. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Taisha. Yeah, question. So I know that we talked with the chief on Monday about the online complaints and they are, it was my understanding that they're going through, actually some of them were accommodations around some of the police officer behavior, which is always wonderful. Um, but there were, I think some that weren't. And so I just wasn't sure what the status was for those, as well as the status for the large amount of cases that were not reviewed. I know some were out of, uh, I, I just, again, I. I wasn't sure if, if we're just not, you know what I mean? I, I wanted an up, I would like an update sometime about those cases. Thank you. Um, just, I, so the second to last slide of the PowerPoint presentation was, uh, I reviewed all the 16 forms that were not processed because of the online glitch. And I've personally reviewed 10 of them that were, not duplicative or referrals to other agencies. And the monitor has already classified 10, uh, all, all 10 of those for being misconduct cases, one you just reviewed and um, six community inquiries. So the um, department has gone through all of the complaints that did they did not receive in a timely monitor and the monitor has reviewed all those that the monitor would normally review so so they are all in progress wonderful i do not um have i cannot comment on the um the other question you had about the detective bureau so, case so, okay thank you if we can get clarification on those that would be great but it's wonderful to hear flow that you were able to review those online submissions and that's in process. Thank you. Panelists, any other uh, business before we go to the public for comment? Okay, give me just half a second here. Um, did we so sign up for all the cases? Sorry, I know we did one, I think. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you for checking though. Yeah. Uh, Sarah's efficiency carries through. Um, great. Uh, so we're going to move to public comment in, uh, next. Uh, so members of the public, every member of the public will be asked if they'd like to comment and unmuted uh, so that they can answer. Uh, if you do want to comment, you will get two unimpeded minutes. Uh, if there's an interruption or a loss of connection, we will stop the clock to make sure you get your full two minutes. Uh, I will give a verbal warning uh, of time. I'm also going to put a stopwatch up on the screen so we know um, at 20 seconds, and we will mute the feed after two minutes. Thank you. Um, uh, panelists, you may offer short responses at the end of the comment, and I'll, uh, at, at the end of the comment, I will um, make time for that, or you can just shoot me a uh, message in the chat to make sure I do make that time. And give me just half a second to pull up the stopwatch. Oh, uh, Corey, could you give me host um, capabilities? You should be able to now. Do, do, do. Fabulous, thank you. Sorry, I'm pulling up the participant list. Thank you so much for your patience and time zoom. There we go. All right. Um, Corey, can we start with, uh, I think it's Dana Katie. Dana, would you like to give comment today? I'm okay, thank you. Thanks, Dana. Uh, next up, 
Zoe Jennings, Corey. Zoe, would you like to give comment? Um, yes, please. Awesome. Go uh, ahead. Thank you. Uh, so I'm Zoe Jennings. I'm a reporter for Yellow Scene Magazine. And we're kind of just following up on the Martha Wilson um, story. So we, we've spoken with her and I was just wondering as a panel, do you agree with Martha's reasons for resigning in protest? And also what does this mean for your panel going forward? Thank you, Zoe. Panelists, any, any follow-up comments? Um, I, I definitely have an answer right. to the second part. Um, we uh, have new panelists coming on very soon. Um, there was part of the um, timing just worked out that, you know, we brought on new people. Um, as, as far as for her reasonings, I think that we um, definitely all agree that there are major gaps and uh, are hoping that we can help to address those gaps and make sure that um, we are prepared and, you know, are, aren't caught by surprise, but are actually checking on this um, and following up on any gaps that we see in the future. So um, that's my hope. And we look forward to working on Martha and helping us with that in the future and any other members of the public that would like to join. Thank you. Thanks, Adasa. Great, in that case, um, Corey, if we want to bring on Darren O'Connor, Darren, would you like to give comment today? Yes, please. Go ahead. Hello, panel members. Recently, city spokesperson Shannon Alaba re was quoted, or she quoted the Boulder Police Association union contract stating, disciplinary action of police is intended to be corrective rather than punitive. And I'd say, wouldn't it be nice if, if people that were arrested were treated this way as well? This statement was shared as a defense of why Chief Harold chose to go against this panel's recommended sanctions of officers that committed serious policy violations. It is now starkly apparent that the police union and its contract is or is used to be an impediment to effective policing and especially an impediment to police oversight. Per our NAACP letter, the city could end the union contract and its negative impact on effective law enforcement. This is this was done in Washington, DC, and I live in Lafayette where there is no union. Most importantly, I'd like to encourage that the community be at the table for trainings on police oversight models and to revise the city ordinance for police oversight in Boulder. These revision efforts need to be public, transparent, and inclusive of the public. I also strongly encourage POP begin getting legal advice from attorneys who are independent of the city. The conflict of interest in being advised by the same attorneys that defend the police has been evident for some time, and this arrangement appears to be leading to you all having your voices silenced. Lastly, building friendships with the police is not your job and creates an appearance of a lack of independence. I encourage you to build relationships with the community and not the cops you oversee. Thank you. Thank you, Darren. I just wanted to share quickly again, just to reiterate about the community um, sessions that we're planning on having with the ordinance. That'll be past my time as, as a panelist now, but that's something that is being worked on collaboratively with Martha to schedule. And so I, I fully agree with you, Darren, that those need to be community oriented and transparent. And I think there's every going to be every effort to be and, and include as many people as possible. And um, I have a feeling that with the new year that there will be more public details about what that actually um, will look like and, and how it'll take form and, you know, all different formats. But just wanted to say that appreciate that. And um, yeah, looking looking forward to seeing what the community comes together. Yeah, Chico. Uh, Darren, I, I, I just want to thank you for the comments that you've made. And uh, one thing that uh, I firmly believe in is us as a community, it's us to decide what kind of community we want to live in and how things are supposed to be. 
So if we do find that or people think that there's room for improvement, I, I think it's, it's up to us to make that change. Thank you, Chico. And I, uh, I agree with that. And that's something that actually we talked about at our um, meeting with the police chief is that at a certain point with collective bargaining agreements and um, uh, uh, an uh, uh, adjudication, you know, that there's, um, there's matters that the community has to take up and, and, and we have to work all together to, to move forward um, in police reform. Any other thoughts? Yeah, Tasha, there you are. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I agree 100%. We talked about this at our community um, outreach meeting as well as the governance meeting. It was wonderful to have conversations with city, the city manager's office as well, not just the co-chairs, but many of us have been talking with them directly and just, again, healing that relationship across city council, city manager, panel, and community organizations. Everybody wants to be in the room, and I think that is... Um, the direction we want to go. And I did want to lift up, though, that we did identify issues not only that are um, specific to Boulder um, and collective bargaining, et cetera, but we also identified some opportunities that may need to happen at the state level as well. And so, again, I just wanted to lift up that the conversations that we're having are not only those with the local impact, but there are some issues that are at, that may need to be addressed at the state level as well. And so really trying to get in coordination with the state effort, the statewide level efforts, as well as some of the national efforts. So really looking to work in tandem to move towards those shared goals. Thank you. Thanks, Taija. Panelists, any other thoughts, questions? Great. I, I do want to mark y'all. Uh, this is a milestone for us. Uh, this is the end of the year. <laughs> and so that's two full years. Uh, the first two years of this panel in operation in the city of Boulder. Uh, I hope you look back on those years with as much pride as I do. Um, and as I know, we all strive, we're all, we all strive for better and we know how we can do this work better and improve it in the year to come. Um, but we have come a long way and we've done a lot of really great excellent work together. Um, I value each and one of every one of you. Um, Ariel and Taisha, I know our time is, you know, we have, we have, a, we have a month to go. Uh, uh, and then of course we have all these new panelists coming on that, you know, Victor, Ch uh, Chico, Hadassah, uh, we, will, um, we will work to bring into the fold of this work. Uh, I also just really wanna thank the OIR group who already what just a couple months into this relationship have brought so much to our work. I know I've learned so much from you. Um, you've done so much to enrich this process and to support this work for our community. Um, and so to be sentimental at the end of the year, when is the best time to be sentimental? I just, I really appreciate all of you and look forward to the new year and a new year of work uh, with the police oversight panel. Um, any final, other final thoughts before we go? Any final shed, sheds of a tear? Great, y'all. Have a wonderful evening. I hope you have a good weekend too. Um, and we'll see you soon. Bye.